I'm looking out the window of the plane, and I see a Caribbean coast below me. It's bright blue. It's beautiful. And as the plane turns ever so slightly, I see an old shipwreck. You know, despite the destruction it represents, it looks almost peaceful. You know, as the plane turns again, you get your first full view of Port-au-Prince. Through the haze, you see a concrete urban jungle stretching almost impossibly up these incredibly steep mountains. As we get a little closer, you begin to make out the little tents. There's so many of them. So many people call this home. They look as if the slightest windstorm would just blow them away. Yet at the same time, they look like they've been there for years. Haiti has a proud history. They were actually the second republic in the Americas, just behind the United States. It was the first ever black-led republic in the world, and has the distinction of being the only contemporary nation born from a slave revolt. Despite its proud and progressive beginnings, Hades found itself on the wrong side of foreign policies, trade embargoes, and political turmoil. These have all led to widespread poverty in one of the America's proudest yet poorest countries. On January 12th, 2010, the eyes of the world finally turned to Haiti, but only after more than a quarter of a million lives were lost in less than 40 seconds. It became quickly evident that we had just witnessed the deadliest earthquake the modern world had ever seen. In just 40 seconds, 250,000 homes and over 30,000 commercial and government buildings were gone. And this cruel and indiscriminate disaster, both the rich and the poor were buried. You know, both the UN and UNICEF headquarters lied in ruins. Even the presidential palace was left a mountain of rubble. For 40 seconds, everyone thought the world was ending. And for those who remained, I think many wondered if it should have. So why are we in Haiti? A couple of weeks ago, a friend of mine died because of an insulin pump malfunction. He was only 22. This has really stuck with me because of just, you know, the pure tragedy found in preventable deaths. You see, Haiti is no exception to these tragedies. One of the many issues is that kids are dying from preventable diseases. Diseases like tetanus. Diseases like cholera. Think about it. Some of these vaccines cost less than seven cents a dose. The problem is vaccines are tricky. They have to be refrigerated and maintained between two and eight degrees Celsius. If they freeze, they're useless. And if they get too warm, they go bad. In a country where even the capital city has power outages almost every day, this becomes a really critical project. Simply put, I tell people I'm in Haiti to make fridges talk. What I mean by that is I'm giving them the ability to be remotely monitored, giving them a voice so they can email you or text you. Uh, they can literally request service when they're breaking down and getting too warm. 
We're using Salesforce.com as our cloud-based command center, and we're installing mobile hardware that allows us to make sure that life-saving vaccines don't go to waste and that they work. The project has already been a success. Our first round of mobile equipment is already sending back information. It can help us optimize cold chains all over the world. Kids shouldn't be dying of preventable diseases. As for Haiti, it may have taken 40 horrific seconds to bring them to their knees. But I assure you, that's not going to stop them from trying to build a better future. They're working with us every step of the way, and we're honored to be here.